page, Dr. Ava says, and Ava, I did not know you were licensed to practice medicine in California, New York, Illinois, Colorado, and Hawaii, all the great states. <laughs> yeah, right, by design, by design, that's exactly right. <laughs> that's amazing, and she's regularly on all kinds of TV shows, including The Doctors, The Steve Harvey Show, Extra, she's on Extreme Makeover, I love that, and she's now like sold in every hotel, her skincare line is on every TV and every hotel I visit around the world. <laughs> yeah, one of my favorite things, people call me and they'll say, so you're in my hotel room with me. I'm like, well, I am, I get around. <laughs> I'm like Santa Claus, I show up everywhere. You're such a boss girl. You trained at um, Case Western University at Harvard, Harvard Med School. And you did fellowship in dermatology. No, I, was Harvard, I was Harvard undergrad, Case Western Reserve Medical School. Oh, okay. Well, that still counts. Still park your car in the Harvard yard. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. And then you did a dermatology fellowship and study. What did you study in your fellowship? I studied elastin expression. So the protein in the skin that gives you the snapback quality and also collagen down at Harbor UCLA with my mentor looking at just various connective tissue issues. Wow. I love that. We don't talk nearly enough about elastin. We're all obsessed with collagen but um, tell me a little bit about your quest to grow more elastin for the skin. So it's very interesting because even though elastin, so collagen makes up the majority of skin. It's 70% of the dry weight of skin. And elastin only makes up 2% of the skin. But it's really when the elastin content goes down, that's when you start to see sort of the sagging happening. When you lose your, you know, when you develop laxity. And so by restoring elastin levels, that will really help with kind of the lifting and the tightening and how, how tight the skin fits over all of the underlying structures. It's so, the springiness, like that elastic rubber bandy springiness. That's so it, critical. Exactly. So a series of laser treatments can help that. And I think that some of the new skin boosters. So I was an investigator for this product called Volite, which is an allergan product and it's about to come to market. And so we use that as a skin booster. And so that seemed to improve the elasticity of the skin. So and that's, that's like gonna be little intradermal injections right in the surface of the skin, right at the level of the dermis, superficial dermis. And it just, it's already available in Europe and I'm so jealous of everybody in Europe that has skin boosters because they love it. It's quite a short-term treatment though. How long do skin boosters last? Well, you do, you actually, you do a series of three treatments and I know they, they last pretty well because they're stimulating, they're upregulating all of the different um, intramatrix proteins. So collagen and elastin and even the glycosaminoglycans. So if you do a series of three, like a one month apart, you're really going to see results up to 18 months, I think. And then you have to start over again. Oh my gosh, that's going to be so exciting. What are your thoughts on collagen biostimulators? That's something I lectured on this weekend about biohacking beauty and regenerative therapies. So it's, what are your favorite collagen stimulators? So I love that. I love that you're doing the rejuvenation and really talking about or rejuvenating it from that angle. And so in terms of the biostimulators, I'm, I mean, the one obviously that you use a lot in your practice and we use in our practice is the polylactic acid, otherwise known as Sculptra. And so that, um, and that creates, I think, sort of a stiffer skin and a nice scaffolding. And have you used the Renuvia, the one that's stimulating the fat? Yes, and that is incredible. For those of you guys who haven't heard of Renuva, it's like an extracellular matrix. It's derived from donated fat and it's sort of blasted to take away any identifiable like you know components that are genetically not yours you're left with this framework when you inject it somehow miraculously your own fat cells go live in that framework and they plump right up in all the best places so i think that's like so futuristic and interesting the pluri like these pluripotent cells that flow through our bloodstream are going to populate these frameworks that we lace into the skin it, so is cool. so, it, is, it is so interesting how pluripotent cells, so cells that can become really any structural cell, are in the bloodstream. And, and it's almost like they have a homing mechanism. When you set up a structure, then they're going to come, right? So yes. It's, yeah, it's shockingly effective. It's really, it's yeah. very interesting. 
I think people don't even realize that you have stem cells just floating through you everywhere. Like you, and when you're an infant, of course, you have a ton. You get the, a ton in placental blood and cord blood. You can get all your stem cells really harvested that way or bone marrow biopsy. But beyond that, you actually still have stem cells floating. So if we can create a framework where they want to grow and they feel happy and they turn on, you're going to have youthful growth of your own collagen, elastin, or fat. That's going to be quite incredible. But I think... Go ahead. I was going to say, you mentioned that you thought it was a stiffer collagen when we use products like Sculptra, that it kind of gives this foundation to the skin. One of my big questions... And I ask myself this because being a surgeon, it's hard to do a facelift on a sculpture face. Is are we actually creating collagen? Are we creating, are we making fibrotic scar tissue collagen? Is it youthful, juicy skin, or is it scar? It's more so since I had that basic science background in both in, in not just elastin but also in collagen. And so collagen, like when you look at it, it's incredibly beautiful. There are these triple helix fibrils that are you know all carefully wound like a beautiful beautiful rope and so i have not seen any electron microscopy pictures of the so-called collagen that's formed by sculptra but it is not normal collagen and you know that when you operate when you do a facelift on someone which i don't do obviously you're the surgeon mm -hmm. um but also um and when you know and if you try to to put some hyaluronic acid through you know, a needle mm -hmm. through it, it can be like you're really, you are going through concrete. And so it definitely is a more fibrotic form, more similar. I wouldn't call it a scar, but more similar to that. But I think for the benefit of Sculptra, polylactic acid, it, because of the stiffness, it can lift, you know, when you inject it along the sides of the face and into the hairline, you can get a pretty nice lift with it. Yeah, beautiful. It, but it does, like you literally, your needle will get dull with two or three pierces of thing. It is like going through concrete sometimes. Are you using sculpture in the hairline? Because I've seen some of my colleagues having very nice results with sculpture in the hairline and actually makes the follicle stand a little more perpendicular so it looks thicker. Have you seen that? Yeah, I've seen a little bit. We're not doing as much there, but I think that that's going to be a new, a new territory. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, where you can really inject. And because I think that the work that's been done, you know, using the threads and everything, once they start like really tacking, you know, tacking up here, then you can get more of an appropriate lift up. Yeah, definitely. It's interesting. The human head is literally as round as a basketball when you're 20. And then we start to thin out and we get this, you know, concavity of the temples. But there's so much volume loss here. Almost you can put eight to 10 cc's of fat transfer into the temple. So it's one of these areas that we have to figure out a better solution for. But I think I agree with you. I think sculpture here gives maybe the firmness you need to support the whole lower face probably will. Yeah. And so at least if you're up there, then you're not going to be trying to stick a, a needle with, you know, some Jupiter in it. <laughs> <laughs> How do you like um, hyperdilute calcium and radius? So that's really a great question. So the, um, I really like it. We just started really treating people on their neck uh -huh. and using the hyperdilute, you know, as the neck treatment. So we're putting it in. It's about a four to one, doing a series about anywhere from two to four weeks apart. And it's absolutely stunning how much, how improved the skin is. You get a really nice tightening effect as well as an improvement of the crepiness. It's so nice. So nice. I just did my neck like for in preparation for my birthday. I really needed it. And it, but we're doing a much higher. Um, I'm usually doing a one to one unless it's like maybe like 70, 80 year old skin. Then maybe I'll do a two to one. So interesting. You're doing a four to one. So that's a lot of it's a very nice wash all through that area. Mm -hmm. So it's a nice wash. And I'm actually just about to begin a study for MERS using the hyperdilute radius for treatment of the decolletage for the, the lines and wrinkles in the decolletage. That's so nice. I love how you've adapted your practice to doing um, so many research studies. How did, how did that work? When did you switch from more clinical and just like patient facing to now more industry and doing more long-term research products? So the, I mean, it's been, a, it, it's been a little while. It's probably been about 15, even 20, really almost 20 years of starting a clinical research site, because it takes a, it takes a long time 
to gear up for all the paperwork and to make sure that every inch of the protocol is being followed exactly. But over that period of time, I've been fortunate enough to work with all the companies that are in the aesthetic field and to bring to, you know, to get FDA approval for everything from, I did the original pivotal trial for Juvederm to some of the trials with Botox to Dysport to Xeomin, the Javo. Um, we just did one for a company called Chroma, and we're doing, we do, a, we've done a lot of the trials around the Tioxane line. Oh my so, God. Yeah. So That's I don't incredible. know, it was just something that kind of came, I had experience with it from before that. And um, it's just, it's an interesting part of the, it's an interesting part of my career to be able to be, to work with these products when they're still being kind of developed. I love that because you have impeccable like honesty and you're true to the you're true to the patient. So it's not like we work for industry because we want to drive their products forward, but we want to see like what can we do for the skin and and that's it's so innovative. I'm glad to see more women running these clinical trials because we go yeah. to these companies and the companies are run by male presidents, male VPs, male marketing departments, male research, and then all the patients are women. <laughs> None of the researchers yeah, right. are women. So right. it's refreshing to see that women are kind of stepping into that role of like investigating things more. Yeah. Well, at Allergan, I mean, obviously there's Carrie Strom. So she's the, she's the CEO of Allergan. So there are, some, yes. there are some women breaking through the glass ceiling. And so that's the good news. And in the pipeline at Allergan, they've just purchased a Tropo Alaskan product yeah. too so that's going to be very exciting to see as that develops in something that that can be injected mm -hmm. um, what's the name of that going to be do we know a name yet no they're so far they haven't even started they have to do the clinical trials go through phase one phase two phase three and so that one i think they've done phase one to show some results but now they need to go to phase two so that's a ways away that's you know a good three years four years away from approval well, talk a little bit about skincare and what you think the next step in innovations are. I feel like we're all inundated with this year. The year of the pandemic has been the year of good skincare. So I hope everybody out there is after age 20 on vitamin C, after age 30 on retin-A products, and 40 and beyond on collagen biostimulators and stem cell growth factors. What is after that? Is there anything exciting on the horizon? So there's, I'm actually in development of a skincare line myself, and I think you have one too. Yeah. And um, I'm, I, so I can't divulge yet because we don't have a name yet, and we're just starting some clinical trials ourselves. But I think that there's going to be sort of more innovation too, along with specifically tailoring skincare to individuals. So there is a company called Some, which is basically So Me. And so that company has designed a proprietary formula where you have your blood drawn, they isolate the PRP, and then they put the PRP back into a airtight jar. That's then they give you a little refrigerator and then you put it into the refrigerator. And then you have this little refrigerator, this little pink refrigerator in your bathroom so that you always have your product there. Um, and then it has, I mean, it's basically growth factors, but it's more tailored to you. And I mean, obviously, because they're your growth factors. And so I think there's going to be more coming down the pike. And there has been a little bit of this, but more analysis of people's individual skin types and genetics and what's going to work for them. And I also think there's going to be a little bit, there's going to be more action with in pigmentation because the over-the-counter, the 2% the hydroquinone that has been taken off of the, um, of, off of over-the-counter. And so there are going to be some new entrants from the cosmetic lines in terms of skin lightening agents that are not hydroquinone. Yeah, if only we could break the hyperpigmentation cycle and solve melasma, then you and I could retire. We, <laughs> <laughs> we can retire that's for now. Sure. That's for sure. And then um, what? And then I would just add like the at home. There's some really nice at home microneedling systems. And at, I mean, you know, you have to be careful with them, obviously, to make sure your skin is clean and that you're like just gently rolling, that you're not like, ah. Yeah. And I think that those are promising in some of the at-home tools. How about you? What do you see? What do you see in skincare coming? Well, I liked the idea of the PRP treatment, but then the more I think about it, those products are not going to last. Like, I mean, does, does PRP inactive interleukins and growth factors last beyond 24 hours? I don't think so. Like, not even in the 
when we spin them and keep them fresh in the refrigerator here, I think in 24 hours, the activity lapses unless it's like a PRF or a fibrin gel that's kind of releasing it. So I didn't really buy into that. It was a good concept, but just like, I think there's work to be done on it. I love microneedling and I, I hesitate for consumers to do a lot at home because I feel like they spend good money on these devices that are two, three hundred dollars and they really get such low depth of penetration, like you know, not even a millimeter depth of needle penetration. So well it's nice to like just give some circulation to the base, you may not need that kind of an expensive tool. Like I think the best tools are lymphatic massage with your hands or a jade roller or a gua sha. So I'm, I'm a big fan of that. Um, I'm hoping that I saw one study you did with um, using tretinoin 0.5% acne lotion in combination with facial foundation makeup. So that's kind of cool to bring, um, you know, real high grade medical aesthetic products into the makeup world. I think that's cool. What do you, what did you came of that study? Yeah, no, I mean, it's, it works. I mean, you definitely see an improvement in the texture of the skin and the overall luminosity of the skin. So that's definitely uh, an effective way to, to approach it. You know, to make sure that people, it's like, it's like putting vitamins in, in um, you know, sugar-free candies. <laughs> it's like yeah. you want to make sure that person's gonna take it. Yeah. So, but it is interesting. I was just lecturing at Maui Derm, Derm meeting. And so there was an ad board and they were presenting the statistics about how people are spending much more. There's been a double digit increase in spending on, especially doctor endorsed or research brands versus makeup. There's been a drop in people's use of makeup. I think that's a good trend because I feel that influencers have kind of taken hold of marketing skincare in a field where they don't know as much. And maybe they're selling products that are not quite as good as how we are manufacturing things. So it's kind of nice to bring authority back to the people who have like real, you know, they really have a degree in diploma and research experience. So that's how it should be. If I'm a consumer, that's what I want. Yeah. So, yeah, definitely. But, and so what, else, what else are you seeing coming down the pike? I mean, I, I think the... There, I think there's going to be a big plug towards like um, hair regrowth products, stimulating hair to grow after COVID. I've seen an epidemic of hair loss and hair thinning. And I think that our technologies are so limited. We have the platelet rich plasma injections or red light lasers and a variety of nutraceuticals, but nothing really works. That's why we throw the whole kitchen sink at hair. So I think there's hopefully room to grow hair in a better way. <laughs> Women need that. We definitely yeah. need that. Right. Yes. Yeah. And I don't know. I think I'm drifting away from threads. I saw you doing some nice thread videos and I've loved threads for some people, but I, I really am a big fan of threads that are anchored. So in my practice, I'm going to go towards more, more than just threads that are barbed that lay in the skin like Velcro and do a little one or two millimeter tug instead of that threads that are really anchored like up into the temporal fascia. So um, more like what we see in Korea, I think those kind of threads are very long lasting and even they're permanent nylon sutures. So I think I want to evolve towards a little bit more of that. I still see that people don't want surgery necessarily. I'm a surgeon, but nobody really wants the downtime. <laughs> Everybody wants to look good with no downtime. So I'm trying to continue to evolve and push the envelope of things that are no downtime. Well, it's so great that you have both skill sets, you know, that you you know, that you know your anatomy, where you're going to anchor, you know, where you're, you're going to anchor a permanent thread into the fascia. I just was in, in October, I was in the country, not the state, the country of Georgia, mm. where the company Aptos, which I'm sure yeah. you've heard of Aptos, which stands for antitosis, which I, I didn't know that. So <laughs> tosis for all the listeners just means like sagging. And they, um, and so the gentleman there, and they're Georgian, they, he was the original developer of those nylon threads like 20, 25 years ago. And so he's still, he's still using them. And so I went there to attend a workshop, which went on for a couple of days. And also they were celebrating his birthday and to, you know, go to the country, which was beautiful. And the food was outstanding. Yeah. Um, and it's really, it's an interesting, it was a really interesting visit. So they were doing things with these threads. They were putting them under the fat pads. They were hooking them out of the fascia. He was using a lot of those nylon threads, but mm -hmm. you have to really, like a surgeon, you know, I wouldn't, I'm not going to be doing a nylon thread. <laughs> but, <laughs> I yeah. 
years ago, I was taking them out all the time. I mean, I think that they're good and the right patient, but sometimes people think it's a facelift and it's just not going to last. So, yeah, it's 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 a whole series of learning how to deal with threads that extrude or pop out or cause tension problems. So I think I think there's going to be a little evolution back to more surgery, like maybe little mini lifts, micro lifts at an earlier age, like in office lifting versus like the two weeks of downtime, like old fashioned Joan Rivers facelift is not going to be a thing anymore. Mm -hmm. So I look forward to doing like little micro invasive lifting. Mm -hmm. And then what about what about Quo? Are you do are you using any Quo? The well, let's let's talk about Quo because that's been an interesting product. This company um, came out with guns firing about how great it was, and then we all jumped on board using Quo. That's an anti-cellulite treatment. It's a shot that dissolves collagen bands that pull and create cellulite dimpling, and it's very effective for some people. Three sessions. But we've been seeing a rash of problems with pigmentation. And I don't know about you, but I think I'm seeing right about 20% of problem patients who develop little brown spots or hyperpigmentation related to the excessive bruising. And, you know, what are you seeing? Because the company initially came out with studies that said about 7% of patients can have dermal tattooing with pigment. So obviously the pigment comes from the hemocytor and it comes from the iron that's in the blood. And so it's, it, is a, it is a challenge. I mean, I think that they haven't really, there is not really guidelines yet about how to try to prevent the bruising as much as possible. So it looks like compression may help with that because obviously the collagenase that's in the product is going to chew up the vessel, you know, the collagen in the vessel wall. So that's why, you know, I'm just saying this for the viewers, that's why you get so much bruising. But you can, there are the, the longer lasers, like a YAG laser can be used to treat the hemocytorin. But then of course, in a person that has more pigment in the skin, you're running the risk of, of some other kind of discoloration. You might end up lighter uh -huh. um, or have light spots. So it remains to be seen and people have to be really motivated to want to have this, yeah. treatment, I think, to get rid of their, their cellulite. Their but cellulite. it does work does work for sure and it I definitely think does yeah it does and so maybe some of it's going to be a dosing issue or maybe there's something like you inject lidocaine with epinephrine around it so that the product doesn't go very far uh. into the tissue and you're just doing the bands I mean I just sort of thought of that but there'll you know there'll probably be some modification of how it's used yeah, I mean, I think um, it's difficult because not all cellulite responds to it, but the the ones that do respond, they really respond, like they'll get rid of all your dimples. So if you're motivated and you're willing to understand that you could have hemocytorin staining for up to a year, which is a long time, like people are saying it can last four months, six months longer. Um, some people are willing because at least they can wear their leggings and they won't see dimpling and it's bothered yeah. them their whole life. So a year yeah, is not a big deal. Right, exactly. Now, there's also people who have that kind of rippling, you know, it's yes. not as simple, but that sort of rippling, especially in an older population. And you can use um, one of my associates, not here, but one of my colleagues, I should say, they're using a very dilute, um, you know, which is off label, obviously, of the quo and sort of threading it around the area. And then they're putting sculpture in. And those mm -hmm. look really pretty remarkable. Are so, they doing that simultaneously the same day? I don't think no, so, right? Different no, no, treatment. Yeah. Yeah, different treatment. But I'm going to get those details for you because it actually looks really good. And I see a lot of people with those issues on their lips. Yeah. yeah. I do too. And I've seen a lot of people who have had liposuction where they have cannula tracts on the back of the thighs. And they're just devastated by the rippling that they do have. So I think they'd be willing to have a little pigmentation. I'm using the Quo off-label for thighs, a little more diluted. And um, have you tried transexamic acid injections or anything for the hemocytorin staining? No, I haven't. I haven't. I, like, I pulled a couple articles that discussed the injectable transexamic acid and topical, and actually even oral which I don't think I'm going to prescribe oral, but we have been using up to 10% hydroquinone bleaching pads. That seems to lighten it a little, but it doesn't really do it. And so I think I'm going to try the transexamic acid injections, which are very safe and been utilized before, but um, be worthwhile to study it at least. Yeah, we do use um, the transaminic acid for melasma. And so mm -hmm. we have it formulated for us, and then we'll do uh, microneedling in the yes. 
in the yeah. office and then apply it. And it's actually really effective. I w and when I was at Maui Durham, there was a conversation, um, Pearl Grimes was talking about hyperpigmentation and melasma. And so the transaminic acid, you can give it orally very, very low dose. I mean, personally, I'm with you. I don't want to, I don't want to give it orally. Now, mm -hmm. especially since we know that COVID can, in, you know, increase your risk of blood clots. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so. Yeah, and there's research to be done. Some people talk about dry brushing the skin to stimulate superficial, like, capillary circulation and clearance of the hemosiderin. That's a thought, or the compression garments. Um, but I just want the consumer to be aware. And in this case, the us doctors and dermatologists, like we are the consumer too. Like we were told a certain thing, we went out and tried it on a lot of patients and now we're having to adjust expectations. So that's, yeah. it's part of the process of learning a new product. Yeah, um, I, agree. I agree. And there is, there is going to be a new device, which I haven't tried, but I've heard of, I think Allergan might've bought the device, but it's a cellulite device and it's supposed to be very effective. Nice. So, yeah, so that's that's exciting. And the other product that's coming out, but this is going to be more for a new way to do fat reduction, is going to be a, a CO2 slurry. Oh. And so it's like, you know, sort of like a, not a gel, but a slurry. It's like a, like uh -huh. a uh, daiquiri, a frozen daiquiri. Although right. don't, don't try to, don't try to uh, take a frozen daiquiri and do what I'm about to describe. <laughs> 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 so one of Rox Anderson, you know, the laser guru, one of his fellows came up with this idea. And so they're just kind of injecting the slurry into fatty areas. And it just does the same thing that external cryolipolysis does. It just sort of pops all the fat cells open and destroys the fat. So that, I mean, they're, they're just finishing their, like, you know, preclinical work. So that's going to be a little ways away. But that's really exciting to be able to have something that's super effective and relatively, you know, it's just an injection, not a big deal. Hmm. So that's, gonna be, that's, and that's gonna like be a liquefied CO2 liquid nitrogen type of a mix that's going to get yeah. like kind of like cryotherapy, but internal, internal. like cool sculpt, but internal. Right. But yeah, yeah you're going to be injecting this, oh. this slurry. Oh, how interesting. Personally. What do you think of, what do you think of threads for like boobs and things like that or sculpture for everybody always asks me about sculpture for boobs, but I think it might be very high risk in terms of like mammogram findings and calcifications. But at some point, like, would you use Renuva ever in boobs? Well, you're the surgeon. Would you? <laughs> <laughs> I, I just think that our population of women is just too much risk of breast cancer. And then you lose the ability to surveil the breasts with mammograms once you instrument them. So I don't think I would. But I know yeah. lots of people are gunning to do things. Yeah, I know. I mean, it's interesting using, I mean, I can see some of the work. The Russians are totally into their threads, too, the Russians and the Koreans. Yeah. And so when they, when they put, like, but they're putting you know, 400 threads in an abdomen for, you know, post like st for stretch marks. And so that, you know, that looks really good, but you're putting in like 400 threads. And I've seen them use like these big, it's almost like putting a rope in like to lift the knee. And so that's sort of, um, but I don't know. I mean, we're getting, we have, you, do you have the M sculpt? Do you have the muscle tightening? Give an I've, no, I've tried it, but I thought that $200,000 was a lot. <laughs> and I want my patients to have great faces, the important real estate first. Right. right. So, but we do a lot of body work. So we did make the investment and it's a really interesting machine because you do definitely get some tightening and you get, I mean, and you get a lot of side benefits. Wait, I saw you doing yourself. Are you like in there every week getting abs and um, next time I, I see you, you're going to be so I buff. Wish. Yeah, because you can do you can do your you can do your um, any muscle you can do your biceps you can do your triceps you can do your you know quads you can do I mean it's <laughs> nice for people recovering like from knee stuff too because it really yeah. helps support the knee you know the more muscle strength you have and so it can be like a little bit of a shortcut to to a fitness program but and people do feel stronger it's really a fascinating technology but that company apparently that company I haven't seen this prototype yet either. But that company has something for the face. And I'm really curious to see like what, I guess if you have tighter muscles on your face, it's gonna give some lifting. Cause yeah. when, you do, when you do surgery, you tack up the muscles as well. Well, when you're pulling up this mass, you're tightening the muscle layer that, along with it. And yes, muscles stretch, they lose density and thickness. And I think 
It's a huge thing. I think when your children, when we're little, we smile 600 times a day. When we are adults, we smile six times a day, like hundreds of times less, these zygomatic muscles. No wonder the cheeks start to droop. So I, I think that there's a little bit of truth to face yoga and face muscle stimulation. We do it all the time for Bell's palsy patients, you know, using EMG to tighten the musculature. So I think there's a role for that. That's super interesting. And yeah. I love that M-Sculpt technology for the pelvic floor, too. I think that is key, like, for both men and women to get nice, good, tight pelvic floors. Yeah, 100%. I mean, it really helps with any kind of urine leakage, you know, with any. I mean, and young, and young women. Young women have it, too, especially yeah. young women who are runners. You know, they can get a weakening of their pelvic floor. So right. For sure. Yeah. And after babies, uh, definitely after babies as well. I, yeah. I think you asked what, what else is going to trend. I think sexual health is going to trend. I think we take such great care of our faces, our bodies, working out, but the innards are just sort of like getting a little old and shriveled and not as functional. So I think that we are going to have a push towards better sexual health. Like Yeah, and I completely agree. And along that line of sexual health, there is a new... Well, it's not that new, but just nobody knows about it. There's a, ma a carboxy mask. It's called the CO2 lift mask. And so there's an in-office version, and then there's an at-home version. And there's also a vaginal version, too. Wow. And so it's very interesting because the way it works, it's, it's Japanese technology, the CO2 lift. And the way it works is it delivers CO2 to the skin, and so it's the Bohr effect. I don't know how good you are in physics. I was not particularly good, but anyway, a little refresher. So what it does is it displaces the oxygen off of the hemoglobin so you get better oxygen delivery to the skin. And so we use it all the time post-fraxel, post like basically almost any laser treatment and sometimes the microneedling. And then sometimes if a person is a slower healer, we'll send them home with these masks and you just sort of mix it up, you put it on, you leave it on for 45 minutes. And the skin comes out looking dewy and refreshed. It's really, it's a fascinating technology. And the vaginal version, people use it for like, like five days or something. You know, you put it, you would put it in as, as if you had a yeast infection or something. And that's very um, effective at helping rejuvenate that tissue as well. That's amazing. And that's going to brings all this rich oxygen to the tissues. I've seen it used for vascular occlusions too, especially yep. if you're not near some place that does hyperbaric oxygen, you can at least get a little bit more, per, you know, circulation to the skin there. But I think that's going to be critical. And then I think hormone therapies, that is also going to be super important. Um, mm -hmm. But I just wanted to tell you how much you inspire me. And every time I see you lecture at a meeting, we were in Monica together recently, and you gave this incredible lecture about sexual diversity and facial, like the changes that we're seeing societally and how the female face and the male face are portrayed. I thought it was so innovative. Yeah, but thank you. And I appreciate your expertise and also your intellectual contribution to the field significantly. I think that the way you're doing procedures is really groundbreaking. And I also really appreciate that you're spreading out so much information to so many people. You're doing an outstanding job and I really admire you for oh it. Oh my gosh, thank you, thank you, thank you. But one of the best things you've te taught me is life skills too, like a little bit more about balance and enjoying myself. And every time I see you at a meeting, you're always, she's dressed fabulously in the most gorgeous designer outfit. She always shops in the gift shop and gets something really special. And she's always meeting her Derm Diva girlfriends. And I just think like these connections that you have with your colleagues and friends and like every meeting you go to, it's so, you, you've really taught me how to like enjoy life a little bit. It's not just about get on a podium and lecture. It's also about like be a real woman and have a really grounded circle of people that lift you. Yeah, oh, well, that's beautiful. And I wish the same for you because yes, I am very fortunate to have such a supportive community. Yeah. Yeah. Well, just I, know how many people out there you inspire with your being an entrepreneur and someday I'm going to have my skincare in all those same hotels right next to you. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do it. We'll do it, Kay. We'll do it. That's a message to all you guys listening. Surround yourself with great people, mentors, people who inspire you. Dr. Ava Shambam. Everyone should go follow her. What are your handles for people to check you out? 
So the Instagram handle is Dr. Ava Says, D-R-A-V-A Says. And yes, I would love that if you follow me. Um, we're we're going to buff up the content going forward. I mean, it's not as bad now, but we're going to increase it. And then also I have for the clinic, we have Ava MD at Ava MD and also at Skin5. Well, you're and killing the, it on... Yeah. Killing it on all fronts, scientifically, as a clinician, as a businesswoman, it's really um, inspirational. So everyone go check her out. And thank you so much for tuning in. For those of you who don't know, I teach an online course. It's called Modern Aesthetic Theory and Artistry right there. And we have an Instagram tribe. Anyone in the world who's an injector can join us. And there's no charge to be part of our tribe. You can ask all your questions from amazing people just like Dr. Ava and myself. And there, there's all these modules. I'm not secret if I'm sharing all my tips from how I do my liquid rhino to my jawline to the sculpture, everything you need to know. So check it out. These chats will keep going. In a few weeks, we have another lovely uh, derm doctor from India, Dr. Rashmi Shetty. So I love the worldwide connection. And Ava, I hope I see you at the next meeting. Which meeting yes, are you going to be at? LAMCA? The, um... You know, I, that when is that, March? I don't That's know. That's in maybe. March. And then Monaco this year, maybe again. I'm not going to no, go to Monaco in the spring. No, are uh, you gonna, yeah, I no. might go in the spring. Yeah, I'm excited. Yeah, yeah no, I, I have the next meeting I have is going to be um, actually the end of this month. It's a multi specialty meeting up in Tahoe. It's a, the Randy, well, it's Corey Moss and um, Randy Waldman. Yes. Well, and yeah, so I'm going to that meeting. That's the next one. And then March will be the American Academy of Dermatology. Well, keep doing what you're doing. We love you so much. And thanks for tuning in, everybody. That's it for now, guys. Stay beautiful. Thanks Thank so you. much, Thank Ava. Thank you so much for having me. So great to see you. Take you too. Time. Can't wait to give you a hug in person. Exactly. Bye. Bye, hon. Bye, guys. Thank you. This week I'm talking with Jessie Golden, former ballerina, rheumatoid arthritis sufferer, and CEO of The Golden Secrets. And guess what we're gonna teach you? The Golden Secrets to life and beauty and health and wellness. I hope you'll tune in. Instagram Live, we're back. Yay, it's Dr. K, one day older. And thank you everybody for the amazing birthday wishes. I'm here with my amazing staff, Pim. Hi. Pimmy, we wanted to treat all of our clients out there to something special. What are we gonna do for them? We're giving away something. Yes, it's baby Zealman time. Baby Tox, my favorite Tox. It's ultra purified. If you're a Botox virgin, more specifically, if you're a Zealman virgin, this whole month, you can come in and see Nurshima and get a free treatment with Baby Zeoman. And that's 20 units complimentary on the house because it's Valentine's, because I love you. And we're so excited about it.